Hey, it's the preacher, and today we're going to do some southern fried okra with some. Got it right here. Been uh, letting it thaw a little bit in the edge of the sink there. This is, um, you might think it's squash. It's actually yellow zucchini. So we're going to call the video Southern Fried Squash and uh, Okra, mainly because you would cook yellow squash with okra, but we actually like yellow zucchini better. Now, the okra came from the school garden where my wife uh, works there in the school. They have a garden, and uh, she brought some okra home. That would probably feed the two of us, but if you're going to go through the trouble of frying okra, fry some other stuff with it. You could throw potatoes in here, squash or zucchini in here. You could throw them both in here, some onions. I'm going to show you what, what we do. So I've just taken the okra pods up and chopped them, you know, somewhat uniform length. And we'll put those in the bowl. And then the zucchini I have dried out as best I could. And um, I froze it, and when you freeze it, a lot of the water in the zucchini comes out. So I set it on paper towels like this, and then I moved them around, and it's, some of it still might have some ice on it. It's pretty cold. Now to the, to the um, okra and the zucchini, we're going to add some chopped onions. I just happen to have purple out of our garden, so purple's the color it is. Now here in the south, we fry things in cornmeal. I know up north they do a lot of flour. And you know, I like things fried in flour, but when it comes to vegetables, I don't really want a flour coating. I want a loose cornmeal coating. So that's about probably half a cup. Let's stir that around and see how well it coats. You can always add more as you're cooking if you need to. If it looks like it's not sticking good, you can always add more uh, cornmeal to it at any given time yeah that's gonna need a little more to that I always like to add Lowry seasoned salt if you don't have possum salt this is the next best thing so let's shake a little Lowry's in there now here's what salt will do it will draw moisture out of the vegetables and by drawing moisture out you have something to make the uh, cornmeal stick to it a little better and so we're just going to toss this around to try to get the cornmeal evenly distributed and I may end up adding some more cornmeal and there again you can't use a recipe here it's just you've got to go to you know what you think it's going to require you know everybody likes theirs a little different but to me that's looking pretty good that looks like something an old southern boy would grow up eating and so to that, we're going to let that sit just a minute. And we're going to get the skillet hot, and I'll bring you back when it's time to fry. All right, the oil is just starting to shimmer. I don't know if you can see it in the reflection of the light there, but it's starting to move and swirl around. So to, this is just a canola oil. You could use vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever. I, I'm going to add a little bit of bacon grease. This is just bacon grease. We're not adding this to deep fry in, we're adding this for flavor. Swirl that around, we don't want one piece getting baked. You don't want to just give your wife a piece that had bacon grease and you didn't get any. So we're going to mix that around. The best way to tell if it's really ready is to throw a piece in. Here's a piece lightly coated. You hear that sizzle? It's time to dump it in there. Now. When I talk about putting oil in here, we're not deep frying, but we're not air frying either. If, if you don't want to put oil in there and you want to try to do this in an air fryer, that's up to you. But you're going to need enough oil to, to keep it moving around. And we may have to add a little oil uh, as we go along here. Here's the key to good fried okra and squash. The key is get it where you want it. And leave it alone. And I can tell you right now, I need to add more oil. Now, if you noticed me adding a little oil here, and a little oil here, and a little oil there. That's because I don't want to stir these. When they made contact with that hot oil, they need to sit there until they brown. 
and if you start stirring this around everything's going to turn to mush we want to leave it there till the bottom of this gets nice and golden and crispy brown before we ever stir it now's a good time to add pepper could have added it earlier and i probably should have all right it has been about five minutes and we haven't touched anything since we dumped it all i did was I peeked underneath this one here to see what color it was. You see this steam coming off here? A lot of people will cover their okra to help it cook or their squash. Well, you've got to get the moisture out. And so things don't brown until the moisture is gone. And when the moisture is gone, you're no longer steaming vegetables. You're browning them. So now that we've done that, you want yourself a sturdy spatula. I just browned a pound and a half of hamburger meat with this one. I wiped it off. So here we go. I'm going to show you what, what we're talking about. Now, it won't be as brown toward the edge because I'm cooking on an electric skillet or electric stove top. Do you see that color right there? Let's turn over this side right here. See that dark brown? That's what we want. We're going to go through here and we're not going to stir it as much as we're going to try to flip it. i got to do something with that camera mount. All right, now once we flip it around, let's pull this stuff in the middle in here. We're going to make all of our movements, spread everything back out. And wait. That was five minutes on the first time. So we'll probably wait three or four minutes till everything on, on bottom is brown again, and we'll do it all over again. But as you're seeing here, some of this is really dark in the middle. Some of it, you know, not so much. The main thing is we're not just sitting here stirring it around. We make our movement, we flip things over, we pull from the edges, then we just got to let it sit. These things take time. So just let this go, and uh, I'll turn you back on in a few more minutes. All right, it's been four minutes since we stirred it last time. The reason we know it's right is because we're, we can stick the skillet underneath it. It breaks loose easy, it's not stuck, and it's brown. So let's take some of this that's been in the middle and lay it over here. Take some that's been over here on the edge, scoot it to the middle. Remember, we're wanting to flip it over. There we go. Now you can start checking for seasoning. See some of these pieces that are uh, already cooked? You can pull those out, one like this right here, let me put it. See that's cooked enough on one side, you can try that and tell if you need more salt, more pepper, more whatever. I'm here to tell you that don't need nothing but a plate. Now, I know, some of you are like, hey, that looks good. That ought to be, is that good? Look at this brown. Look, look at this brown. Yeah, but look at this green. We, we don't eat okra like this. This okra needs to be brown like that. So, while everything is fully cooked and some of it is crispy, another five minutes right here, and maybe another seven or eight minutes right here, will make an amazing difference in the texture of your okra. Some people, you know, complain about okra being slimy. Well, they're eating it before it's fully cooked. Don't stir it. We've stirred it around. We've flipped it all over. Just let it go. We'll come back and do that a couple more times. Then I'll show you when it's ready. Don't do it right here. It's not it yet. All right. Now let's have a look. There's still a few green pieces of okra floating around, but let's see what it looks like on the bottom. Perfect. Now we're getting close to done. We want to start rolling these green pieces of okra to the center. Every piece of okra needs to be at least browned on one side, blackened on one side. Some of you are going to think it's burnt. I think it's flavor. Everybody agrees that the little brown stuff on the bottom of the pan, I think they call it fawn, that's supposed to be flavor. When that fawn is stuck to your food, you got flavor on your food. So this is about right. We're going to give it one more turn. And I'm, I'll probably dump it out in about three minutes. 
See, let me give you a close-up here. There's a piece that is fully browned on one side, but you flip it over, it's still nice and bright yellow. Let's have a try. Mmm. That's the way they serve them in heaven, I think. Alright, this is probably it. Yeah, there's some dark, dark, deep, dark brown. Everything's pretty well coming off the bottom. We got a good, good skillet. Everything's pretty well cooked up. It's not that bright green and bright yellow. Ah, oh, that piece right there. Alright, it's time to set this out. Now, we've got a lot of oil in the bottom, so we're going to put it out on paper towel on top of a uh, plate. I want all of that cornmeal out of there and onto here. Let's let that cool a minute and I'll take a bite while the rest of my supper cools and let you know what I think about southern style okra and squash and cornmeal. Alright, I've got spaghetti going. That's what we're having tonight. Spaghetti with some fried okra and zucchini. My noodles have four minutes left, so I'm going to give you my honest thoughts. I like it with it don't need to be this way all over, but at least on one side, there needs to be some crunch. With the okra, even if I eat one of the greener pieces like this, it's so tender, it's so soft, that little bit of brown on the back side with the cornmeal gives you a crunch. Anyways, that's how we do it in a cast iron on a Wednesday. I think I need to stir my noodles and I might keep snacking for three minutes and 20 seconds. My wife's watching me eat it. I'm eating her share because we're going to split what I have left. Hey! See what I put up with around here? Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.